Hey guys, it's January 2016 and this is the official announcement of the D3 Sling. I wanted to take this opportunity to talk about where it came from, what it is, and what and some things that you can do with it. Uh, I think the first thing you'll notice when you pull this, this sling out, it's a two to one point sling, and um, but you're gonna notice the lightweight uh, of, of this whole entire package. This is a plug and play, ready to go, metal hardware is already included, adjustment handles, uh, single and two point capability, ready to go. So that's what's really neat about it. Uh, but some of the things that we did to lighten it up or to, I guess you could say, trim the fat on slings because I, I noticed slings getting bigger, bulkier, and heavier. And that's not really the point of a sling. Uh, the point of a sling is to, to retain your weapon system in, in case you have to relinquish it or go hands on or something like that. And I don't want a lot of stuff in the way where I have to work around the sling. Uh, I want the sling to work around me. And that's, that's what we wanted to do with this. So. The big, the big thing that uh, really stands out to people is the pad. You know, we, we put a lot of time and effort in designing this pad. A again, it's as simple as it is on a sling. It's Dura Stretch bonded tweed fabric that we've used, so it, it adds a lot of comfort, a lot of durability. If you've ever felt rock climbing harnesses, that's some of the, uh, some, of the, the some great mountaineering companies out there that, uh, that build or jackets, you'll find that material, and it's really, really a cool material if you haven't felt it. So um, that's gonna be huge. Now, the big thing about this is, uh, again, the plug and play aspect. So it comes with all the metal hardware on there. So what we did is on the back of the sling that connects to either your stock or your rear end plate on the back of an AR or an AK or something, um, is the one inch D loop. So we minimized the loop here, made it a little bit smaller so that your hand is not interfered with. So weapons manipulation, there's less, less stuff back there going on. We've got on the opposite end, a standard one inch. And okay, that's standard that standard one inch is, is so it can free flow on your adjustment handle. And then the last metal component that we have besides the, the simple uh, ladder or uh, friction adapters here is a custom ambidextrous tri-glide that uh, we built with impact weapons components for, specifically for the D3 sling. So this can be flipped around for left-handed or right-handed. Okay? And then we have our two adjustment buckles here, one being an adjustment handle so you can use it for manipulation purposes and the other one is a fit buckle okay i'm going to talk about this one now so when you pull this this sling out of the packaging the first thing you want to do is put it on and size it you don't want to just plug it into a weapon right away so one thing that you can do to keep it simple here is take your sling out if you're right-handed go ahead and just drape it over your right shoulder okay now you can see my tri-glide is facing inward so it can receive the sling QD from this side. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and plug it in to the tri-glide to fit it for single point because that's going to be a very important thing here. All right. Now you can see this sling is already kind of sized and fit for me, but what I did is if there is slack up here, okay, I'm going to take that out with the fit buckle. Never use your adjustment handle to fit it. This is only if you need to use it when you're manip manipulating the weather. All right. So if I go into two point mode, you can see that I would adjust the handle if I needed to put it on my back or you know climb something, maybe it's a ship or a water tower or a conix box or a roof, whatever the case may be. That's where that handle is going to come into play. Now when you, when you fit it, you want this handle to be in the seam of your shirt underneath your underarm. Okay, Not too far back where you can't get to it, uh, but you don't want it up close near the tri-glide either because then you, you lose that range of motion. All right, so you want to size that right there. So that's the first thing I do is stick that on my side, put the tri-glide in the center of my chest, and then take out the remaining slack from right here and then fit it. And then if you have an excessive uh, tail, you can go ahead and cut that off, heat it with a lighter, or uh, if you have a hot knife, you can cut it with that. That way it doesn't fray. And then your sling is fit and ready to go. Because um, if you're in a situation where you are maybe thrown onto your back, uh, you trip and fall, or you have to shoot in a supine position for some, some weird reason, you can use the sling assist method. And that tighter sling is actually going to help you assist in recoil management, okay, versus having a sloppy gun and recoiling all over the place. So there are some positions out there that, that might help you out, just keep it tight. It also helps when you are switching shoulders. If you do switch shoulders, again, it's more of that, um, hey, what do I need to do right now, and what is the risk I'm about to take? So if you're doing hardcore CQB, do you think you're going to be switching shoulders all the time? Probably not, not if I've got 25 guys behind me or a team of guys with me, uh, because we have to move quickly. Now, if we're more deliberate, maybe home defense, and I grab my rifle and I throw the sling on, um, or maybe I'm in control and time's working for me, well, then that's a part of that risk and need formula. 
what are my resources available and is time working for me or against me? So if in that case it is working for me, then I would take that quick second and switch shoulders and look around the corner. So it's certainly something that needs to be practiced, uh, not just the switch itself, but also shooting offhand and in different positions from that non-dominant shoulder. So that's very important if you're gonna, if you're gonna switch. Um, the switch also helps in tactical environments like shooting underneath a vehicle, okay? Not just a tactical environment like a house, but if you get underneath a low center of gravity vehicle and you're on a high shoulder, you could actually hit the bottom of the car. So maybe you shoot your fuel tank, your, your exhaust, um, you know, may not be a big deal if you're just shooting through metal, right? What's the big deal there? It is accountability of your rounds going down range. Where do they go? Uh, or maybe you just shot the gas tank of the car that you need to get in and drive off. So being able to switch shoulders quickly underneath a car, if you found yourself in that position, is very important as well. Okay, so all those things need to be practiced. Um, so one of the things that you can do is with a weapon system, if I was to pick up a weapon here and go ahead and plug it in, I like to run my single points on an end plate back here. And at that point, <clears throat> if I needed to go into a two point mode, we want to get used to practicing going into this position. And I don't really need to slack it as you notice. So I can, I can certainly go slack here, but I don't need to. If I wanted to put this on my back, from that single point adjustment, I can literally pop my arm out, go to my back, and I did not need to, to open it up at all. And I see a lot of people opening up their slings and messing with a sling when they don't need to. This is when I'd want to adjust it, is to pull it up on my back tighter. So now if I'm going to climb, you can see it's high and tight on my back. Okay. Then if I need to come off, I can slack back down, pull it around, bring my arm in, and then go back to single point and I'm back in that original fit, tight feel. So again, when you start switching shoulders now, there you go, you're back and you're good, okay? So that's just, uh, again, some things that you can do with the sling. All of them need to be practiced, switching shoulders, getting into awkward or what people would, would consider unorthodox shooting positions. I like to call them my new normal. Um, climbing things, get out there and practice those. No matter what sling you have, um, the, the, the technical emphasis on it should be subconscious, okay? So that's what we mean is when you get out there and you start working a gun, don't forget about the sling. There's lots of things that the sling's gonna help you or hurt you, so make sure you practice those things, guys. Uh, again, you can find the, the, uh, the disruptive sling, the D3 sling on our website. It comes in three different colors as of right now. You might see some, some colors coming out in the future, but we got Coyote Black and Multi Cam. So guys, that's pretty much it on the sling. I'm Travis Haley. Stay sharp and be safe. Thanks for joining me.